the input system, you have something called action maps. And action maps are just a list of actions. And of course, your actions are just a list of bindings. So action maps are used to group a set of actions that share some similarity. So for example, if you want your player to have certain controls while they're on the land, you can make a land action map and add your actions for when they're on land. And if you have separate controls while, for example, they're driving, you can add an action map here. And maybe you can call this drive controls. And here you can add your actions for when they're driving. So they're useful for grouping things that belong together. But the question arises, how do you switch between two different action maps? And how do you enable multiple action maps at the same time? Well, the answer is pretty simple. If you want to switch between one to another, then if you're using the player input component, so in this player, I have a player input component. I've attached the input action asset that I just showed. And then the default map is land. Then if you have a player script, edit script, make sure first that you're using the input system namespace. And then you want to get a reference to your player input component. So get component player input. And then I just assigned it here, private player input, player input. And then what we can do here is make a function for switching an action map. And it depends on your case, but in my case, I have this action called switch map, which will switch the map when pressed. So in this case, I want to subscribe to this. So in the on enable function, I can do player input dot actions. This returns the input action asset. Then I can index with my action, which is called switch map, switch map dot performed. Here I can just have a switch action map function, which down here we can declare private switch action map. And then this has to take an input action dot callback context context. And right here it returns void. And so then all you have to do is call player input dot switch current action map and then the name of your action map. So in my case, mine is called extra map, extra map. So this will switch the current action map, but that also implies that there can only be one current action map at a time with the player input component. So if you want to enable multiple at the same time, then you can actually bypass this entirely and do it manually. So here we can do player input dot actions dot find action map. So we have to find the action map and then you pass in the name of the map, which in this case is extra map. And then you can enable that. And if you want to disable an action map instead of enable, you can just call disable. And one thing I want to mention is to make sure to unsubscribe to any events that you're subscribing to to prevent any memory leaks. So just replace the plus equals with minus equals and change this to on disable, on disable. And so this is how you can have multiple action maps enabled. So if I comment this out and I copy this line, I can change this for land and you'll now have two action maps enabled. Now, if you're not using the player input component and you're using the generate C sharp script, which in my case, it generated this script player controls. Then in the same way, we can get a reference to our player controls private player controls, player controls. You have to instantiate it, player controls equals new player controls. And you have to be sure to enable the controls and make sure to disable it when the script is disabled. And in a similar fashion, you can do something like player controls dot the action map that you want to enable or disable. In this case, let's do land dot disable as an example, or you can also call dot enable. So this is just how to do it with the generate C-sharp script format, or if you make the bindings through code dynamically. I do want to mention that instead of doing this each time, we can cache this value. So let's just copy this as an example. And up here you can do private input action map, and you can call this extra map or whatever yours is called. And then in your awake function, you can do something like extra map equals player input dot actions dot find action map and extra map. So you can store this value and you don't have to keep finding it each time. And then here you can replace all of this with extra map dot enable and extra map dot disable. Another thing I want to mention is that if you're using the player input component, you can do player input dot current action map, and this will contain a reference to the current action map. You'll see it returns a type of input action map. So we can equal it to an input action map. Two of the things I want to mention, if you want to switch between an action map controlling your player and one for the UI, it's not entirely obvious what's going on. So if we make a UI, right click UI event system, you have to replace this with the new input system by clicking this button. And you'll see that it creates an action asset with some default actions. So if we double click that, we'll see that this is an entirely different action map than ours. So this is a different instance of an action map. So if we wanted to enable the UI or disable the UI, then 
the easiest way in this case would just be to disable this component. However, if you want to include this in your own input action asset, you can click the first one in the UI action map, shift, click the last one, then control copy or right click and copy. Then you can go to your action map. I'm just going to double click it. You can make another action map here and call this UI. Then in this action map, you can control V and it'll copy all of the UI actions from the other one. I'm just going to cut this action. Make sure to save your asset. And then if you go to the event system, you can delete this one and then add in your own. And this error pops up. Basically, it's complaining that one of the values isn't set to pass through. So in the UI action map, we just copied, make sure that the navigate is set to pass through for it to stop complaining. You see here, it says it should generally be set to pass through so it can distinguish between input from multiple devices. So just save that asset. And now you have the UI in your action map, which you can disable or enable as you'd like. And so you're probably wondering what happens if I want the same action to exist in multiple action maps? Well, Unity actually says that no action can appear in two maps at the same time. Within a map, all of the actions have to have a name and each of them must be unique. And this is probably because if you have multiple action maps enabled, it won't know which one to find if you have two with the same name. So super important, make sure that your actions are unique in their names. So then you're probably wondering, how can I share an action between different maps? And the answer is that it's not entirely obvious. Unfortunately, it's not really set up for the UI well, as you can see here. One of the developers state that Control schemes is a way to group different bindings. However, you can only have one active control scheme at a time. So a workaround is to do this through code manually, which isn't the best option. For example, in this case, what they're showing is they create an instance of an input action asset, which is a scriptable object, create a new action map, add the map to the asset, add action map. Then they add an action to the map. And with the action, they add a binding. Here you add in the path, which the path would look something like this gamepad button south. It's a camel case with the device and the button or the actual control here. And then you can assign a group to the binding. And once you assign a group, you can assign a binding mask to the asset, which enables the different groups. So here we add a new input binding with the groups B and C enabled. So I hope that helped you out. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'd like to thank all my patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. It really helps me out. And with that, I'd like to thank my new patrons. In the supporter tier we have, thank you so much. In the enthusiastic tier we have, Diamond Wolf on Discord, Lorenz, Aptiam, Nami, Thuyen, Philip, Corvarox, Julio, TTV Girly True Gamer, and Twixi. Thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code early access to videos and an exclusive Discord channel. And if you're not already in the Discord channel, make sure to join. You can chat, post memes, or ask for help. So once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.